Well, you know, it is no secret that 2020 has been a rough year for all of us. And it's no wonder, of course, now knowing that, that folks are looking towards the holidays for a little bit of cheer. Millions of people getting a jump start on things from decorating to shopping. And with this holiday season being so new, unique, we wanted to make sure that you had the information you needed to manage that holiday debt. And that's where our consumer investigative reporter, Bill McGinty, comes in. He's been talking to experts and he's got some answers for us. Hey there, Bill. Yeah, hey, Vanessa, you know, we talk about managing holiday debt every year about this time. But you know what? In 2020, when you talk about managing holiday debt, and you talk about, you know, the unemployment rate being what it is, it's it's hard not to, you know, cross the two together to talk about how best to manage holiday debt this particular year. And there are some great strategies out there. In the first two weeks of the 2020 holiday shopping season, consumers spent an estimated $21.7 billion online. That reflects a 21% increase over the year before, as people seem to still be shy about brick and mortar in-store shopping right now. While spending is good for the economy, it can be risky for people to pile up debt right now. The reason that I'm worried about that is that credit card rates remain really high. Ted Rossman yeah. is with CreditCards.com. Money management skills and advice is big business. The average is about 16%, but some people are even paying 20, 25, or even 30%. Credit card rates are still high, so this is definitely expensive debt. Skittish about spending too much this year? Well, look at it this way. Bankrate says if you spend $1,000 on your credit card with a 16% interest rate and only make the minimum payments going forward, it's going to take you five years to pay that off. And you're going to end up paying about $440 in interest. So that's a big expense on top of what you might already owe because about half of Americans already have credit card debt and the Fed says the average is about $6,300. So you don't wanna be paying off this year's Christmas, next year, and beyond. Your options? Look for those credit cards that at least offer you plenty of rewards, like cash back or money up front to even open the account. Being money smart at the end of 2020 will likely give you a lot less stress in 2021. And let's face it, Vanessa, you know, we could use a lot less stress in 2021. But, you know, one of the things that's real popular to give uh, nowadays is experiences. But when I was talking to Ted earlier via our Zoom call, he said, you know, experiences don't always have to be concert tickets or, you know, two nights in a hotel somewhere or anything like that, or even a gift card to a fancy restaurant. An experience this year can be being someone's dog walker or maybe giving a young couple, you know, a night out, be, be their babysitter for uh, so they can have a night out, something like that. You know, that's still a good gift. Yeah, that's a really great point, because, Bill, we had in our household been doing the experiences thing for a couple of years and the pandemic, we were starting to think, what would that look like this year? You know, if you can't maybe do a lot of traveling and such. But I love yeah. those ideas you mentioned about maybe giving you know a gift of maybe just helping someone else out with something that they need it you know need that help with